In this video, I'll show you how to measure tiny, tiny currents with a low cost digital meter. I'll start with the basics of current measurement and I'll show you why the accuracy of your meter shouldn't be trusted. I'll show you how to measure down to a few hundred picoamps. We'll take a look at my prototype and the final version of my nanoamper. But first, the question is, why would we need to measure tiny currents? Well, if you power your Arduino or similar microprocessor by battery, it can be good practice to send it to sleep between it doing operations and that saves unnecessary battery drain. And when sleeping, the microcontroller may take microamps or nanoamps or even picoamps. The ESP8266, for example, consumes as little as 500 nanoamps when shut down and 20 microamps in sleep. The next question is, how can we check these small currents? Most meters go down to milliamps and some to microamps, but it's unlikely a meter will go down to nanoamps or picoamps. So let's have a look at how the current is normally measured. In this diagram, the supply is on the right and the microcontroller is on the left. To measure the current, you have to break the circuit and insert the ammeter. The ammeter has got a very low resistance, just an ohm or two. We'll assume an ohm for our purposes. And that's to ensure there's very little voltage lost across it. Now, most meters only measure down to about 0.1 milliamps, which isn't enough sensitivity to measure sleep current. Internally, though, the meter doesn't actually measure current. It can only measure voltage. It calculates the current by dividing the voltage by the resistance, a standard ohm's law. Now we can get the same result by replacing the 1 ohm ammeter by a 1 ohm resistor and setting our meter to measure the voltage across it. This resistor is known as a shunt resistor. Assuming the device under test consumes 100 milliamps, the voltage drop across the 1 ohm resistor will be 100 millivolts. It's a small loss and it shouldn't upset the microcontroller and it's easy to measure. Now, assume the device is put to sleep and consumes one microamp. The voltage across the meter will be one microvolt, and most meters won't be able to measure this small voltage accurately. So one way around this is to use a high resistance, say a thousand ohms. The voltage would then read one millivolt, which is probably the lowest your meter will read, so that's not really accurate either. And at this point, I should mention that the lowest digit of a digital meter shouldn't be trusted. Take a look here at a typical meter specification. On the 600 millivolt range, the voltage is quoted to be accurate to within 1% plus 10. Now the 1% is okay, but the 10 indicates the last digit can be plus or minus 10 away from the correct reading, which then of course makes the last digit completely useless. The 6 volt range is a bit better. The voltage is quoted to be accurate within half a percent plus 3 but you still can't rely on reading one millivolt accurately. To get around this problem, we could increase the resistance to get a higher voltage drop. Let's try 100K. At one microamp, the voltage drop will be 100 millivolts. It's high enough for a reliable reading and low enough not to upset the microcontroller. Taking this a step further and using a one mega ohm resistor, the 100 millivolts on the meter would indicate a current of 0.1 microamps or 100 nanoamps. Let's take a look at the various shunt resistor values and the range of currents you can measure. Here's a table I made up. The top line shows a shunt of 10 megohms. Now, most digital meters have an internal resistance of 10 megohms, so we can get rid of the external resistor and just use the 10 megohm meter as the shunt. So here, 100 millivolts on the meter will indicate a current of 10 nanoamps. I tested this by connecting a microameter in series with our 10 megohm voltmeter and ramping up the supply voltage. The meter on the left measures microamps and you can see that it's not got the resolution of the voltmeter on the right. They're both measuring the same current, remember. The ammeter on the left has only got one digit resolution, but the voltmeter has four. All you have to remember really is to make sure the decimal points in the right place. Now we've got an obvious problem here. When the microcontroller wakes up and takes more current, the 10 mega ohm resistance will drop so much voltage that the microcontroller just won't work, it will fail. So the simplest way to solve this is to introduce the resistor only when you want to measure the sleep current. So what we do is we could put a switch across the um, meter, close it, fire up the microcontroller 
and when it eventually goes to sleep, open the switch and then we'll be able to read the uh, sleep current. But of course, there is an easier way. Instead of uh, not knowing when the controller is going to wake up, you could use two diodes. And this will limit the voltage across the meter to about 0.6 or 0.7 for silicon diodes. And if you didn't really want to lose all that much voltage, you could use uh, germanium diodes, which are 0.3 or 0.4 volts. I call my device the Nano Amper. This is the first prototype, which I used to get proof of concept. I cut open an old USB extension cable, fished out the red cable, cut it and inserted the Nano Amper board. I could have stopped the project here, as that's all you really need to know. But I decided to rebuild it in a nice box. Notice I've added a socket for the ground negative connection. And among other uses, it allows you to break out the naught and 5 volts from the USB supply, so it has got that extra use. Now let's discuss the way you actually use it. It's important to select the correct range. If it's too high a current range, you lose accuracy. And if it's a too sensitive range, you lose too much voltage across the shunt. If you're not sure which range to select, you can use two links, one on the bypass and one on the range you think you need. When the device goes to sleep, you can remove the bypass link and read the meter. If it's not the range you wanted, put the bypass link in, change the range link and then remove the bypass link again. And that way you'll never starve the device of current. Let's look now at how you read the meter. You have to know where the decimal point goes. So as a guide, when the meter reads 0 0.100, this corresponds to the range link setting. You can allow the meter to be as high as 0.3 before the diode protection kicks in. Something to note is that you don't have to use the USB connections for input and output. If your requirements don't include USB connectors, then simply you just use the red sockets for in and out, which is basically straight across the meter leads. And the range uh, jumpers still work. As a bonus, you can make it even more useful. You can connect a digital oscilloscope across the meter terminals instead of the meter, but set the probe to times 10 because then that way it will appear as a 10 mega ohm resistor. Here is the result of resetting my Weebos D1 Mini, which uses an ESP8266 controller. We expected the sleep current would be 20 microamps, but it turned out to be around 8 milliamps, and we found this was due to the regulator on the board. So we need a lower current regulator. Had I not built the nano amper, I may not have known this problem. So a few things to note further. Don't expect the nano amper to accurately indicate a higher current when the microcontroller wakes up. The diodes clamp the output voltage on these currents, so any indicated voltage over 0.3 will be invalid. You should really ignore it. Just use it as an indication that the process has woken up. Just a couple more things. If you decide to measure nano amps using just the meter as the resistor, don't use the protection diodes as their leakage current becomes significant at very low currents. And there's not much point in using a 1 ohm shunt, as in my table, because the resistance of the wiring is going to be significant compared to that 1 ohm, so you'll just lose accuracy. Okay, it's cheap and cheerful. It doesn't have a high dynamic range, but it's simple to build and can be very useful to monitor your consumption of your battery projects. So I hope you like this video. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos, and I'd like to hear your comments down below. Bye!